Hello, Santa Clarans. As mayor of the city of Santa Clara, it's my honor and pleasure to welcome you to the 2021 State of the City Address. At this time, I'd like to introduce my fellow city council members who have joined me here at Central Park Library. Representing District 1, Council Member Kathy Watanabe. Representing District 2, Vice Mayor Raj Chahal. Representing District 3, Council Member Karen Hardy. Representing District 4, Council Member Kevin Park. Representing District 5, Council Member Suds Jane. And representing District 6, Council Member Anthony J. Becker. I also want to acknowledge our elected police chief, Pat Nicolai, and our elected city clerk, Hassam Agog, who worked tirelessly for the Santa Clara community. I would also like to recognize a few members of our city council appointed leadership team, city manager, Deanna Santana, and city attorney, Brian Doyle. Now to help kick off the 2021 State of the City Address, I've asked local Santa Clara Scouts from Troops number 394 and 2394 with Scoutmasters Bruce Lee and David Sharberg to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Please join me for this symbol of loyalty towards our flag and country. Please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. To our scouts, thank you for leading us in the pledge. Today, I will be providing insight on a variety of topics with focus on the city's response to the COVID-19 pandemic, our purposeful path to recovery, and a continued commitment to our community's bright future. Life changed dramatically this past year. Businesses shuttered, homeschooling required, mask wearing mandatory, public parks closed, sporting events canceled, graduations turned virtual, places of worship vacant, and many Santa Clarans lost their jobs. Residents were getting ill, emergency rooms were packed, first responders and medical workers were exhausted, yet still they gave their all, shift after shift. COVID-19 cases were climbing, and sadly, not all survived. Residents were required to stay put, stay in, mask up, and do one's part by staying six feet apart. Our community was tested unlike ever before. Fortunately, after months of recalibrating and closely following Santa Clara County's health and safety guidelines through various tiers within our city, we added food distribution sites, COVID-19 testing locations, and eventually, vaccination centers. Finally, we begin to slowly feel hopeful again. What makes Santa Clara a wonderful city? It's our compassionate citizens that make a difference. It's folks that pitch in, help out, and give their time and energy to make life better for others. Reflecting back over this past year, I asked each council member to identify a person or organization from within their council district that has gone above and beyond to make a positive community impact during the pandemic. Let's learn more about some of our community heroes now. I'm Santa Clara Council Member Kathy Watanabe and I represent District 1. I'm recognizing Dr. Neera Singh, Director of Behavioral Health at Aki. Aki is a nonprofit health center serving those who are low income, immigrants, refugees, and survivors of violence and abuse. These groups have been the hardest hit by the pandemic, and Dr. Singh has worked tirelessly, ensuring the continual focus on mental health and self-care and ability to receive the COVID-19 vaccination, as well as being a strong advocate against Asian hate and supporting community-based accountability strategies. In closing, as one of Dr. Singh's friends stated, she is one of the hardest working, selfless and kindest women I know. Thank you, Council Member Watanabe for this recognition. 
The pandemic created a need in the community, which is a call to action for us to quickly pivot our integrated health services to reach the most vulnerable of our community and safely serve their whole health needs with trauma-informed, client-centered, and culturally responsive services. From ACU's Federally Qualified Health Center, Behavioral Health Department, and Advocacy and Wellness Programs, services were uninterrupted for our diverse community members and provided in their preferred languages. We also coordinated community COVID testing and vaccine events, delivered meals and resources for isolated older adults, shelter in place kits to families in need, art therapy supplies, and connected families with needed resources to be able to participate in telehealth. We were able to provide safe housing and supports for survivors of domestic violence and human trafficking and address the fear, grief, loss, and other behavioral health needs of children through older adults while advocating for social and racial equity and justice. It's truly an honor to accept this award as a proud District 1 resident, especially from someone that I so greatly admire for all of her work for the community, especially during this pandemic. Thank you so much. I'm Santa Clara Vice Mayor Raj Jahal. I represent District 2. I'm recognizing Mr. Mahesh Nihlani for 2021 District 2 COVID-19 Community Hero of the Year Award for his services to protect the senior community during this pandemic. His passion for social work, hospitality, and care for seniors has been unparalleled. In addition to protecting the community from the spread of COVID, Mahesh is very active in the field of civic, cultural, and social causes. He consistently strives to make our local community a better place to live happily. Congratulations, Mr. Mahesh. Thank you, Vice Mayor, for recognizing me as the District 2 COVID-19 Community Hero. I would like to most humbly accept the award plaque on behalf of all our wonderful seniors at Priya Livy. The pandemic created a need in the community, which I answered by getting together all our seniors to stitch face masks, knit beanie caps and scarves, contribute towards homeless feeding, do yoga, meditation, and other fun and wellness programs over Zoom which even other seniors could participate in. This activity of giving back to the community in these very trying times helped them keep calm, peaceful, healthy, and happy. I am happy to say that we had no case of COVID at all. It is an honor to accept the award and thank you. I am Council Member Karen Hardy and I represent District 3 here in Santa Clara. I'm so happy to recognize Raisa Galat as the District 3 COVID-19 Community Hero for providing aid and service to the community during this pandemic. Riza works here at the Pacific Gardens Assisted Living and Memory Support Community just off Monroe Street. She was working as a medical tech when she contracted COVID. Riza spent one month in the ICU and two more months in the hospital. When she was released in September, her health did not allow her to continue as a med tech, but she's so dedicated to her patients that she is now the receptionist and the first smiling face everyone who works, lives, or visits here sees. Thank you, Risa, for serving in Santa Clara and being our COVID hero. Thank you, Council Member Hardy, for recognizing me as the District 3 COVID-19 Community Hero. The pandemic created a need in the community, which I felt compelled to answer by spreading awareness and sharing my story. It is an honor to accept this award and thank you. Thank you to my family, friends, and my Pacific Gardens family for being there for me during those difficult times. Thank you to our community heroes. We will get back to more honorees a little bit later. Serving as your mayor, I've had the pleasure of delivering the state of the city outside of City Hall in a variety of locations, in our Youth Activity Center, the libraries, our Community Center, and our Senior Center. Ideally, the state of the city should be held in neighborhoods, making it easier for our residents to find out what is happening with our city. It was also a great way for us to engage with our residents before and after the annual address. This year and last, we've had to come to you virtually. Hopefully, this is the last year of an online State of the City, and we will be able to come out from behind these screens and communicate with you in person. 
I'm so excited, and I'm sure you are too, that the state and county's health restrictions have finally loosened up as we get a handle on the COVID-19 pandemic, and now we are able to come together again safely. We are moving in the right direction on our road to recovery and finally returning to all the things that bring us joy. From dinners with friends at our favorite restaurants to large events like the Santa Clara Parade of Champions. Before I share with you what the city is doing to reopen safely, I wanna take a few minutes to highlight the city's efforts over the past year and what we've done to keep our community safe and connected. While the COVID-19 pandemic restricted our ability to interact in person, the city's responsibilities and service to the community didn't stop. We still responded to emergency calls, maintained parks, provided power and clean drinking water, and picked up refuse. Our city council unanimously determined that the highest priority should be COVID-19 assistance and relief. Serving the community is what we do. It's what we know. My family has a long history of serving Santa Clara. It's in my blood. When COVID-19 emerged, it disrupted a lot of our routines, but it didn't stop the need to serve. The pandemic created new needs and amplified existing ones. So we had to rethink how we provide in-person services we did our very best to pivot within the health guidelines while continuing to provide the core services our community counts on. Instead of in-person classes, we switched to virtual recreation classes and library story times for children and families. Instead of completely canceling all of our popular community events, we tried our best to offer as many virtual celebrations as possible, such as park openings, Earth Day, Memorial Day, Fourth of July, Veterans Day, and holiday tree lighting, just to name a few. We continue to engage the community and maintain transparency by streaming our meetings online, using Zoom, Facebook, YouTube, and Channel 15, accepting live testimony and online comments from the public. We even found a way to continue our resident favorite annual cleanup campaign while adhering to strict health and safety protocols, and that was not an easy task. In addition to our regular services, we made a concerted effort to address immediate needs in our community during the COVID-19 pandemic by responding quickly and leveraging quality partnerships with local agencies. Early on in the pandemic, I spoke to city manager Santana about the need to keep our children fed in Santa Clara while schools and other programs closed. We were especially concerned about weekend meals. Many parents had either lost their jobs or had their work hours drastically reduced and needed help. We recognized the importance of ensuring that the nutritional needs of children living within our community were met during the public health crisis. So we kicked off Healthy Meals Santa Clara in March 2020 to supplement weekend meals so no child would go hungry in our city. We partnered with the Santa Clara Unified School District, Spectra Venue Management, Levy Premium Food Services, Mission City Community Fund, and California's Great America to distribute more than 150,000 meals over the course of six months. I want to formally acknowledge and thank all the city employees that served as disaster service workers who stepped up, helped with logistics, and worked at our community distribution sites throughout the city. The community needed help and you answered the call. Special thanks to Assistant City Manager Cynthia Bajorquez and team for their leadership in our food distribution. However, the need didn't stop there. In the fall, we still saw an immense need for families who continue to experience food insecurity during the ongoing pandemic. So the city partnered with the Salvation Army and Second Harvest Food Bank to provide free food items through the Food for Families program and has and will provide weekly support through the end of this month. We also had to take a close look at how our seniors were being fed. How could we safely support their hot meal lunch program and also make sure our homebound seniors were fed? We created a curbside pickup process for hot meals and expanded our senior meal program to also include weekend meal delivery. 
thank you to our Senior Center employees and to our beloved Santa Clara Firefighters Foundation for producing and delivering these meals to our cherished senior population. Small businesses, often the backbone of our business community, needed help too. Many saw their businesses either drop dramatically or become non-existent practically overnight. So we implemented the Small Business Assistance Grant Program to offer immediate financial assistance to nonprofits and small businesses with grants of $5,000 and $10,000 to help maintain their businesses and workforce. I am proud to say that the city supported 248 local businesses with more than 1.7 million in grants. Trying to help further, we set up a small business energy efficiency grant program through Silicon Valley Power to help business fund energy efficiency upgrades that lower operational costs by reducing energy consumption. We also saw that many households, including low-income residents, needed assistance with past due rent payments that accumulated during the health crisis. So the city created an emergency rental assistance program to help prevent low-income households from losing their homes, and we have offered three rounds of funding so far. Santa Clarens are very compassionate and generous, and we heard from our community that residents want to help residents. So we reinstated our Help Your Neighbor program, which allows our community to donate funds to help neighbors who are struggling to pay their utility bills. These are just a few examples of the many things we did to partner and serve our community. We have many people and organizations that have gone above and beyond to make an impact with our community during this COVID-19 pandemic. Let's hear from our city council members from District 4, 5, and 6 about the community heroes they have selected. I am recognizing Tom and Martha Taylor as the 2021 District 4 COVID-19 Community Heroes for neighborly outreach above and beyond any expectation. Tom and Martha have always supported the community, helping neighbors connect, setting up barbecues at their home, and sending out newsletters. During the pandemic, the Taylors actually stepped up their efforts, hosting game and talk nights online, organizing donations and deliveries of food and flowers, and keeping track of their neighbors in need. They sent out messages on where to go for toilet paper and other necessities, and kept people informed and encouraged with anything interesting they saw or heard in the neighborhood. Santa Clara is blessed to have such thoughtful and compassionate citizens. Thank you, Councilmember Park, for recognizing us as the District 4 COVID-19 Community Heroes. The pandemic created a need in the community, which we answered by helping our neighbors and encouraging good neighboring. It is an honor to accept this award and thank you. Hi, I'm Santa Clara Council Member Suds Jane. I represent District 5. I'm recognizing Jen Yu from Yoga 6 for this 2021 District 5 COVID-19 Community Hero Award for finding creative ways to hold yoga classes in the parking lot and to keep her brand new business afloat when severe restrictions on gyms and exercise facilities were imposed. Jen spent her life savings building her dream yoga studio, which was scheduled to open April 1st, 2020, which was two weeks after the county imposed a lockdown. Jen created a yoga oasis with string lights and heaters in the parking lot amidst loud trucks. Her community also volunteered at Second Harvest and raised almost $2,000 to stop AAPI hate. It is truly an honor to recognize Jen. Thank you, Councilmember Jane, for recognizing Yoga 6 Santa Clara as a District 5 COVID-19 community hero. During the pandemic, our community's mental and physical health was suffering. People needed to get out of the house, connect safely with others in person, and prioritize health and wellness. We answered this need by offering a full schedule of socially distanced outdoor yoga classes in the park and in our heated yoga oasis. In addition, our community came together to help others in need by distributing groceries to local families, raising money to stop Asian hate, and sending oxygen and COVID supplies to India. 
It is such an honor to accept this award and we want to thank the city, our landlord, our members and yoga teachers for standing by us during the pandemic and together supporting our community's health and wellness. I'm Santa Clara City Council member Anthony Becker representing District 6. I'm recognizing the restaurant China Delight and its owner Lisa Chung for this 2021 District 6 COVID-19 Community Hero Award for their dedicated service to serving up delicious to-go meals to our city during the pandemic when indoor dining was banned. China Delight has been a resilient, longtime Santa Clara eatery and its owner Lisa Chung is a small business champion. They have been an everlasting member of our community and have gone through many ups and downs including moving to different locations. A couple of years ago, a fire burned down the former by the bucket, which was to be their new home. On the horizon, they are rebuilding. After serving our community for years, China Delight is a champion, and that is why they are deserving of this award. We will continue to look forward to your yummy food. Thank you to the city of Santa Clara for this award. Thank you to the community for supporting my business, and thank you, Councillor Baker, for selecting me. I'm honest and will cheers this moment. Let me talk for a moment about the financial situation of the city. On June 22nd, 2021, we adopted the city's two-year operating budget. The budget uses a balanced approach with a combination of new revenues, expenditure cuts, and reserves. Through federal stimulus funding, we were able to avoid deeper cuts and preserve essential core services for our community. While difficult budget solutions were necessary to bring the budget into balance, we look towards recovery in late 2021. Economic conditions are projected to significantly improve as the vaccine rollout accelerates. Fortunately, preceding city councils created a healthy budget stabilization fund, or as many refer to it, as a reserve fund. It was created to address any emergency situation that the city may encounter, a rainy day fund, well, little did we know how hard it would rain in our city, how quickly we would lose our much needed sales tax and hotel taxes that feed our general fund. Through the combination of budget reserves, land sale reserves, and the 26 million in one-time federal stimulus dollars, we are making it through these tough budget times. With the diligent work of our finance department in collaboration with all city departments, we are ending this fiscal year with cautious optimism. We as a community faced other challenges over the past year, some that are ongoing and some that have led to new opportunities. In Minneapolis on Memorial Day last year, the world saw George Floyd die. Last year, I expressed to our community that I wanted to make some sense of this tragedy by making Santa Clara a better place. No city or community can ignore what happened and the issues that have been raised about race and justice. So to engage our community in the discussion and to seek feedback from our community, we established and staffed the new Task Force on Diversity, Equity and Inclusion. The task force is charged with identifying key issues facing the city involving historically disenfranchised communities and making recommendations to policies that help the city achieve racial equity. Along with the health care crisis, we must deal with issues of race and justice if we are to hand over a great city to our next generations of Santa Clarans. I am also proud to say that we as a city are doing things better. The last few years have been highlighted by major reforms that have made our city government more open, transparent, and accountable to our public. Despite the fact that the 49ers management company filed seven legal actions against the city and stadium authority, we are still taking measures to make sure our stadium is operated legally and that we actively enforce Measure J to protect our general fund from stadium operations. We are actively working to enhance our lobbyist ordinance and public calendar disclosures so that it is fully transparent and that the needs of the community are prioritized over special interests. We are also taking steps now to assure financial confidence for our future. 
we are poised to reactivate our hospitality and tourism activities. We have our nationally recognized convention center operator, Spectra, in place, and we formed a new marketing arm, the DMO, the Destination Marketing Organization, to help with attracting conventions and visitors to Santa Clara. Our efforts will increase our revenues from tourism as our region recovers. We have several specific plans in different stages of completion in Santa Clara. This will bring much needed housing, especially affordable housing to our community, but with a sensitivity to existing neighborhoods and neighborhood amenities. The much awaited Related Santa Clara project will break ground this next fiscal year and will offer our residents tremendous new restaurants and entertainment and will contribute millions in revenue each year to our general fund. The pandemic hasn't stopped the city from keeping the community active, engaged, and making positive impacts on mental and physical health. Our Parks and Recreation Department and libraries continue to offer a broad range of programs, including music, dance, painting, musical theater, and performance opportunities. Our libraries give us access to books, learning, and imagination. Our bookmobile, which includes our world-famous karaoke singer, driver Cody, extends the reach of the library and strengthens access to books and other materials for the entire community. Our bookmobile will be stopping by our local parks throughout the summer, so keep a lookout. And speaking of parks, some of our true community treasures are our public parks, and we have continued to rehabilitate, maintain, and create new parks in our city. Parks and open space have become even more critical to the quality of life in Santa Clara. I'm especially proud of the parks that were improved and added this year. The Agnew Park Playground Rehabilitation, the Fuller Street Park Sports Court, Nuevo Community Park, Meadow Park, Redwood Trail, and Creekside Park, Machado Park Playground Rehabilitation, Homeridge Park Playground Rehabilitation, my favorite, Reed and Grant Street Sports Park, Books or Middle School Tennis Courts, and the reopening of the Raymond G. Gamma Dog Park, which has undertaken a complete transformation. To keep Santa Clara operating, it takes a lot of work, and it's not just elected officials who should receive credit. We have in the last few years benefited from the work of our talented city staff, led by city manager Deanna Santana. City manager Santana has professionally turned our city around and helped our council with a magnitude of reforms in a short period of time. For those who are new to Santa Clara and who may not be aware of her responsibilities, Manager Santana is the chief executive of our city and oversees all of its operations and administrative services. She is also the chief executive of Silicon Valley Power, our public electric company, and the executive director of the Stadium Authority. And let's not forget that she runs and manages the convention center each one of these city entities is complex and challenging. I want to thank City Manager Santana and her management team for their steady leadership and guidance, helping us carefully navigate through an unprecedented pandemic, a truly challenging time for all of us. I also want to recognize all of the city employees who keep our community safe and moving forward, providing essential city services and working with the public as disaster service workers. I have seen your dedication, tenacity, and desire to serve those in need. Your service is truly remarkable, and I couldn't be more proud. Thank you on behalf of the City Council. Speaking of remarkable, let's take a moment to honor one last award recipient, the Citywide COVID-19 Pandemic Heroes of the Year the River of Life Christian Church and Foundation, whose exceptional aid and remarkable service to the greater Santa Clara community deserves full recognition. It gives me great honor and pleasure to present them with this citywide distinction, one so well-deserved. Our city and its residents were hit hard during the pandemic 
And ever since COVID-19 hit our community, the River of Life's Foundation and its dedicated volunteers rolled up their sleeves and opened their hearts. And through their food pantry, these incredible volunteers served thousands upon thousands of our community's neediest citizens. But they did not stop at food distribution. They took the time to truly understand the needs of those in need and also made sure that essential household products and hygiene supplies were available. And they even distributed school supplies for students learning from home. In their always kind and giving way, they provided tremendous help and service to our community. And for that, we, the city of Santa Clara, will forever be grateful. I had the good fortune of attending many of their community outreach distribution events and continue to be amazed each time by the level of love and dedication from not only the project's leaders, but also from all the loyal volunteers who diligently staffed these distribution events each and every week. When the time came for me to consider the 2021 citywide COVID-19 pandemic hero of the year, I immediately knew River of Life deserved this highly coveted recognition. Thank you to the River of Life Church and Foundation. On behalf of the City of Santa Clara, it gives me immense pleasure to present this special city award to Pastor Tong Lu. Thank you, Mayor Gilmore, for recognizing River of Life Foundation as the Citywide COVID-19 Pandemic Hero of the Year Award. The pandemic created a need in the community which we felt compelled to serve. And it is also the focus of our foundation mission statement. We were able to serve thousands of individuals and family with fresh food boxes, hot meals, healthcare products, school supply, and household necessity during this crucial period. Our food pantry doors were consistently open throughout the pandemic. We would not have accomplished this without the many brave volunteers sacrificing their time, energy, and health to come out to serve the people in our community. Thank you to everyone here and those watching. You are the backbone of this food pantry operation. This award is as much for all of you as it is for our foundation. It is truly an honor, Mayor Gilmore, to receive this special recognition for our foundation. I promise we will work even harder to partner with you to reach the many more people in our community with our programs. I want to give a special thank you to everyone who is here today and to my family for their continual support and trust. Thank you. It's my great honor to receive this special award. I will thank the mayor and the city council for recognizing our contribution to the community. I also want to thank all the members of River of Life Christian Church. Without their dedication, we cannot do what we have done. And of course, I will thank God for giving us the opportunity to serve Him and serve the community. All this year, as I serve in the church, I see church as the bridge. On one hand, I see there are so many needs in the community, especially during the pandemic. I've seen so many people suffering, not only physically, but mentally and emotionally. So many people come to us for help, just for very simple need in their lives. But on the other hand, we also experienced great blessing from God. During the pandemic, we experienced that God had opened so many doors for us so that we can connect with many business and relief organizations to provide all the resources that we can never imagine before. So indeed, the church is the bridge. Through the church, we can channel God's blessing to the needy world. But of course, I know that we cannot do it alone. That's why this award is so important and significant. Today, the church and the city should join hand together. When we join hand together, we can do more. I'm thinking of a community center in the future to serve the elderly, the youth, and the new immigrants. I'm thinking of the school in the future to serve the young working family. There are so much things we can do. 
This award makes us to see that what we can do in the future. This award also deepens our relationship and commitment to the community. And once again, I believe that by the grace of God and through our cooperation, we can make this community a better place. Thank you and God bless. Thank you, Mayor Gilmore. As a fellow Santa Clarin, I am one of the 10,000 families who receive food boxes four times a month from the foundation. Thank you for taking the time to recognize them and giving the best award. To Pastor Tong, we appreciate your vision for starting the food pantry in the year of 2007. Beginning in the church garage, and growing to a 5,000 square foot warehouse next door. Thank you also, Mr. Sam Lowe and 120 volunteers. We salute you for setting up four driving lanes four times a week before the vaccine until now. You are a light, like a city set on a hill. People see your good deed and your example of loving neighbors and communities. Today we see amazing love through you. May God bless you and your family. We all know Santa Clara is filled with so many resilient residents, dedicated business owners, educators, and leaders of faith who genuinely care about our community. We also know that our city is recovering better than most, is on solid footing financially, and there is good reason to be optimistic. When we come together for the common good of our community, Santa Clara shines brightly. Thank you so much for the opportunity to serve.